All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's time for another student of the gun radio. And uh, we're doing this. We're doing We're actually recording this on a Tuesday morning, be released on Wednesday to live to to the world, to the world. As that's what we do. That's what we do. Today, we're gonna, we've got a Duracoat finished firearm for you. Uh, we've got a Brownells bullet point. We've got a student of the gun homeroom uh, about being dangerous on demand. And then we're going to talk about the main topic is defend yourself. No one is coming. I don't know how to say that more plainly. Is there, Zach, is there a way that we can more plainly say prepare, you need to be prepared to defend yourself? No one is coming. We could add on, nobody is coming, and even if they do, there's a good chance they won't help anyway. They won't help, yeah. Or or they'll just turn on their cell phone and, and record. You're like, no, but it's the job of the police to save you, and that's what they will do. Look, man, I... Uh, yeah. All right, I, before I get pissed, before I get annoyed, let's go and do the things that are not going to annoy me. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one. All right. I was watching a Crowder video the other day because I subscribed to his thing. And so I get, you know, emails and it was a short five minute video, but he started out. He's like, he goes, we were doing show prep today and I was very angry and, and everyone said, stop, save it, save it for the show. Apparently, in Crowder, so he goes, apparently, you people are entertained when I get angry. My, apparently, my anger entertains you. So, so my producer and my writer are like, just don't, just save it for the show. Plus, have, plus when you're angry is when you're the most passionate. So that's always interesting. That is true. I am passionate. I am passionate about it. So if you are watching in the Discord channel, and, and I hope that you are, and if you're not, you're listening some other time, you're like, what is this Discord thing? Is that what the kids do to play video games? Yep, that's what the kids do to play video games. So uh, don't worry about it there, Grandpa. Oh, but you know what's, you know what's funny? is not all grandpas are like that, because I'm a grandpa, and and I know, right? Do I know? You do know. I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. There you go. So uh, we are live on the Discord channel and uh, the links in the show notes. If you want to do that, if you'd like to watch us live, if you want to see how the sausage is made. Some people don't. Some people are like, I definitely don't want to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> kind of like movies, you know, some people, some people, they don't want to know. They don't want to think about all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And I, I do. I kind of think about that. You know, since I we were involved in television production for a while there, uh, so I, I kind of know what goes into, you know, the uh, production of television. So when I see television now, I, I view it from the perspective of someone who's been on the other side of the camera and, you know, uh, but not everybody wants to see how the sausage is made. And I get that. I totally get that. So there you go. All right, the very first segment of the day, and if you are on Discord, you can always throw a question there. Zach will monitor the questions, and if we feel it's relevant, then we will uh, answer it on the show. Is the first segment of today playing the intro music? Sure, sure. That would be the first segment, play the intro music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. All right. All right. All right. So there we are. Oh, so you, you're going to you're going to go ahead and monitor the uh the, the the chitty chats and stuff like that, right? Of course. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So Zach's going to monitor that if you guys have questions. It looks like there are some people actually here uh, publicly watching. Yeah, watching. Oh, man. All right. Duracoat Finish Firearm. The Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week is brought to you by Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Oddly enough. Yeah. 
Yes, indeed. There we are. There we are. All right. So um, I got a question for you guys. Number one, how many of you guys went to the NRA annual meeting and uh, convention here last weekend in Houston, Texas? And if you did, did you go over and visit our friends at Duracoat? If you did go and you didn't do that, shame on you. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Even, I don't want. I don't want to see you no more. That's right. That's what. Uh, <laughs> more stay. Uh, y'all got ten seconds to get to the dance floor. I don't want to see you no more. So, uh, for, hopefully, you went over there and did that. But I've, I've got a question for you guys. Did you, Did you watch the? VP 12, the Victor Papa 12 AK shotgun video that we just released. And if you didn't, well, you should, because we just did that for you guys so you could watch it. Now, it is, I absolutely hate that. It is a, um, well, it's a black. It's all black. It's, it's a, and which, as you would expect, I mean, I wouldn't expect it to come from the factory green or brown or blue or whatever. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, the shotgun, the VP 12 shotgun, arrived in the black. Uh, it's just a plain black. And if you know me, if you know me, you know that I probably don't want to leave it black for very long because that's just, you know, it's boring, right? It's, it's boring. So, what am I? What color am I going to put on that thing? What pattern am I? Gonna, pattern am I going to put on that thing? If you have an opinion, if you have an opinion about the color or the design or the uh, the pattern I should put on that gun, go ahead and jump into the Discord channel and uh, under the Finish Firearms or in the general chat, I don't care, uh, and say VP12, do this or do that or whatever. So. I'm, I'm serious. It, number one, did you guys watch the video? And number two, if you did watch the video, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, what, what color do you think we should put on that? Because I'm not just going to. I mean, I guess I could. I could just leave it alone, leave it black. But what fun is that? Yeah, that's boring. Well, and, and it's, it's kind of a perfect canvas because it has a, you know, it has a standard AK style stock. It has great big fat 12 gauge magazines you know there, there's plenty to work with there there's plenty of space and area to work with so i don't know i don't know i'll have to i'll have to think about that and i'm open to suggestions now the other thing i wanted to talk to you guys about is have you checked out jukesy.com yet and a lot of you guys are sitting there and you're like what the farfic nugan is that here's the deal juxxi.com if you look in the show notes there's a link to the uh, to the video uh, Juxi is a new video media platform and uh, it is run by our friends by people that we know personally and it is designed to support the first amendment and free speech and to give the people on our side an alternative uh Someone in, on our side just last week, uh, one of our gun people had YouTube scrub like they just removed like 218 or 227 or something like that videos from their channel. Just he woke up that day and pfft, YouTube had taken him down, said, you violated our policy. Which policy is that? The one that we just whatever community standards will. Well, well, which which standard? Our standard, like JP Sears. Which standard? Our standard. But what is your standard? It's it's our community standard. So just don't worry about it. We're going to do whatever we want, and you're just going to live with it. But you're not going to get that at Juxy. Uh, that's not going to happen. And we need you guys. Yeah, you. You guys are listening to me right now. We need you guys to actually get your butts over. Uh, to Juxi, and I, we need you to follow and subscribe uh, to our Student of the Gun page so that the people who run it will look and say, oh, those Student of the Gun guys, they actually have a fan base and people actually care. So uh, do that. Do that. That is uh, J-U-X-X-I, Juxi, it's your story, our technology, a better future. That's their little tagline. So 
if you haven't checked it out yet, check it out. I want you guys to do that. Go into the show notes, click on the link. You can watch the VP12 shotgun video, and then you can send me suggestions. Send me suggestions. Uh, what color pattern, camouflage pattern? I'm uh, probably not going to do a Chick-fil-A one, but uh, I'm not that talented. Not that t- I don't have that much talent. I, although I did go to Duracoat University, so I have some talent. Uh, I think I think the thing that I'm most proud of, Zach, after I went to Duracoat University, tell me, was was doing the tiger stripe pattern on the Occam Defense AK. I think that's probably the thing I'm most proud of. That is pretty good. That was pretty good. That's something to be proud of. I'll also give you that. Yeah. Yes, indeed. All right. So, cat in the hat and that be that. If you'd like to be a pro Duracoat guy, follow the link, studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. Jump on over and uh, join their, uh, well, you can get in this Duracoat University and you can learn how to do it like a pro, like a professional. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Moving on. It's time for... Time for us to talk about SDS Imports. Yes, SDS Imports, as you heard at the very beginning of the show, uh, they are the title sponsor, they're the show sponsor, and they were just at Houston. They just were at Houston, and they gave it away. I don't know if they gave it away yet. I'll have to check with those guys. Uh, but they were giving away a super special PX9 Generation 3. They're doing a PX9 Generation 3 that was a one of a kind. Had a stainless steel slide. It had night fission sights. The Accurate, the student of the gun Accurate sights were on there. Uh, in addition to that, they also had a, uh, a coupon or a gift certificate for double tap ammo. And our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters, you're like, how did Crossbreed Holsters and Night Fission and SDS? all get together and start working with each other. I don't know. Maybe they have a mutual friend. They have a mutual friend on Facebook. That's what it is. <laughs> they have a mutual they all have a mutual Facebook friend. Oh, yeah. Pretty interesting how that worked out. So one of you freaks, I hope it was a fan of Student of the Gun. I hope it wasn't just some rando. That'd be kind of a bummer if it was just some rando, you know, that wasn't a student of the gun fan that, that won that. I'd be kind of bummed. But, uh, so thank you to them for doing that. Actually, thank you to the guys uh, at SDS for including Crossbreed and Night Vision uh, in their giveaway. And if you guys didn't see it, you can probably still go to their uh, fascist book page. I think that they have a fascist book page and they have a, uh, also an Instagram page and all that. So you guys can check that out You can check it out. So, all right, let me see, let me see, let me see what's up next. So is there anybody, is anyone in the discord right now, Zach, who was at the NRA annual meeting? I'm going to ask that and see if anybody jumps in and says, yes, I was there. Um, we don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, but I'm hoping that somebody was there. I will let you know if somebody pipes in and is like, I was me. Hey, it was me. Uh, so one of the things that uh, they were supposed to do, they were supposed to do at the NRA annual meeting was to display the actual Yeet Cannon, the newly designed handgun from High Point Firearms. You're like, well, what's, what's so special about the newly designed handgun? Well, the newly designed handgun has a redesigned slide, redesigned frame, redesigned magazine, threaded barrel from the factory. And uh, the plan was to unveil it at NRA. Now, my question is, I, since I didn't go to NRA, I was up here in the mountains in the cold-ass rain. Yes, I was in the cold-ass rain. Um, I don't know where you guys were, but this, if, if you're going to be outside grilling and doing stuff, you didn't want to be where we lived because it was just cold and rainy and miserable pretty much. Uh, pretty much the entire... The entire weekend. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean to complain about the weather, but 
Yeah, this was this was a good week to stay inside. Uh, weekend would stay inside. That's what I did. So, did any of you guys go? Nobody. N- none. We are not getting anybody coming in and being like, "Yo, it was me. I did it." Yeah, I'll be like Harley Army over here. Ah, uh, none of you dumbasses. No. All right. Well, <laughs> anybody know who Charles Whitman was? None of you dumbasses. No. <laughs> He shot those people from that clock tower in Texas. Yeah, that's right. From the book's depository. No, that was Lee Harvey Oswald. He shot Kennedy from the book's depository. <laughs> like, what? If you didn't see Full Metal Jacket, you know what I'm talking about. So go ahead and hit pause. Go watch Full Metal Jacket. Come back and you can be educated. All right. It's time. It is time for us to move on. But before we move on, you guys are going to open up your ears and you're going to listen just a little bit louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Hey Zach, before we move on, I don't want to uh, I don't want to miss this opportunity to say thank you to the guys at uh, Tactical Response. Yes, thank you to them. Yeah, to the guys at Tactical Response. So the guys at Tactical Response reviewed the brand new Student of the Gun Instructor Development Manual. They reviewed it, and they posted a video of their review on the James Yeager YouTube channel uh, because apparently James's the, the Tactical Response channel got beaten up has been getting beaten up by YouTube. So they just decided, uh, screw it. So if you go to the James Yeager channel, uh, there is a review. And I, what I would love is if J- Zach would take that a hyperlink, take the hyperlink to that video and drop it into the show notes. So if you guys are out there and you're like, well, I don't know about this Paul Marble guy and, and his books and stuff. I don't know if I trust him. <laughs> Well, don't listen to me then. Don't listen to me. Uh, listen to a completely. This was an unpaid review. I did not. I did not tell these guys what to say. As a matter of fact, I was not in contact with either one of them. I've never met either one of these gentlemen in person. So this this review was was done. I know that James told them to read the book and uh, to read it and review it. So they read it and reviewed it. So thanks to the guys at, I was going to say thanks to the guys at Student of the Gun. (laughs) Thanks, Student of the Gun. No, thanks to the guys at Tactical Response uh, for taking the time to review the instructor development manual. So if you guys would like to to get a uh, a third-party review, if you'd like to watch a third-party review of that, then please do. Please do. Uh, And also... (laughs) because I just apparently can't stop myself from writing. Uh, Since the instructor development manual uh, was released, I also wrote and released another book called the Precision Rifle Range Book. (laughs) And today, as we're speaking the words into this microphone, I checked and we have been promised that the Precision Rifle Range Book physical copies will be delivered to the Student of the Gun Shipping Department, to the official Student of the Gun Shipping Department. Yes, uh, I, I tracked the package, and it says it is out for delivery by end of business today. Good. So, so uh, uh, Zach, do you know where American Fork is? Oh, yeah, that, that's just right down the road. I could drive down there in like 15 minutes. Yeah, it's right down the street. So as of 7 o'clock this morning, your package that's coming to you was an American Fork. Yay. So there you go. There you go. So if you, you guys would, uh, if you want a pimp hand approved copy of the of the book, 
uh, then you can go to shopsotg.com and get one there. There you go. That's my shameless plug for my books. All right, let's move on to the Brownells bullet points brought to you by Brownells. That's right. All right, bing, bang, boom. I hope you guys all opened your uh, text messages this weekend because uh, Brownells, well, if they didn't send one to you, that means you didn't text BRN to 5562223 like I did. I texted BRN to 5562223, and they had a special going. Uh, They had a special promotion, and they sent me a little message, and they're like, hey, freak. Oh. so if and also if you missed out, they have an extended Memorial Day gun builder sale going on right now. They got promo codes. So and that goes on till uh, the 4th of June until June 4th. So you can get $10 off an order of $100 or more, $20 off 175, 30 off 250 and 45 off 350. So uh, and all you have to do is click the little hyperlink and It'll take you where you need to go. So they're running sales. But that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today, since we used the Brownells bullet points uh, to talk about hardware. Generally, this is where we talk guns and hardware and hardware specifics and so on and so forth, right? Well, uh, in the video that we mentioned previously, I mentioned in the video previously about uh, doing the what you call it, the, the Jukesy, not Jukesy, the Jukesy video with a VP-12. I just opened up shotgun shells, and I'm, I got shotgun shells in front of my brain and everything. The one issue that I did have uh, was with the, the Winchester skeet and trap load. Uh, and if you guys know anything about shotguns, if you're a shotgun aficionado, then you'll say, duh, uh, skeet and trap load is meant to be shot out of over unders or side by sides or whatever, uh, or you know, manually functioning guns. Of course, you're not going to get reliability in a gas gun out of Skeet and Trap because it's super light. Yeah, that's true. Now the gu- it did fire, and the weird thing though, Zach, was that when we when you, you edited the video, obviously you know. So when I had the failure to eject. Yeah. Right. When I had that stovepipe issue where the shell got caught in the action that happened a couple of times, but it was always the last shell. I wonder why. Well, because there. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, basically the follower is supposed to be the follower now is up. The magazine follower is up. It's supposed to be catching the bolt to lock it open, but it didn't get back quite far enough. Because of the gas pressure, it didn't the gas pressure didn't kick it back quite far enough, um, so it didn't catch, and it tried to go forward and it caught the shell. So you're like, well, who cares? Well, the reason I bring this up is because if you're going to use a a gas operated semi auto shotgun, and right now there are probably more semi-auto shotguns available for sale in the United States than there ever has been. And most of them are military type fighting configuration. They're bull pups or they're AKs or whatever. They're all coming in from overseas. Now there've always been semi-auto shotguns going all the way back to the Browning A5 and that, but they were generally for sportsmen, duck hunters, you know, whatever. Uh, Remington had the 1187 and they also had the 1100, uh, Mossberg has the 940 series and so forth. And of course you have Benelli and Beretta and those guys. Now the Beretta, the Benelli super black Eagle three is the balls. If you're looking for a sporting semi-automatic shotgun that you can shoot turkey, dove, skeet, rabbits, squirrels, I mean, pretty much deer if you want everything the super black eagle three is the balls um i had a super black eagle two when they were brand new and uh it was the balls back then and the black eagle three has just 
slight modifications and improvements over the two. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the two. Um, now, are they giving those guns away? The answer is no. They're not giving them away. <laughs> They're not free. I think the Super Black Eagle 3 prices out at around 1800 I want to say. Uh, I'll look it up right now. For sale. It's for sale. I'm going to go to Cabela's.com, which you should never do, but <laughs> it just popped up. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, it's only uh, if you want the, the real tree or tree bark version. Um, it's. It's it's priced between fifteen ninety nine and sixteen ninety nine, so that's not that bad. That's not that bad. I think the MSRP is probably uh, around eighteen seventeen. Yeah, Bass Pro has them for seventeen ninety nine, so eighteen hundred bucks. Uh, the true gun value seventeen fifty eight. So you plan on spending about seventeen hundred bucks. Of course, you have to pay tax on that. So you're going to end up paying however much taxes on sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars worth. You say, why are you bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because if you go to almost every single one of the online dealers, fill in the blank. Uh, I, like I said, whether it's it's PA or PSA or CF or you know any of the innumerable online companies that sell guns, almost all of them are stocking these magazine-fed semi-automatic shotguns, and they're all priced to to move. They're all between like three, four, five hundred at the most. And you think about that, you're like, wow. Even if they're five hundred, that would mean I could get three of those for the price of one Benelli. Yeah. But what does that mean? Well, that means is that there are more American shooters, more American gun owners that have these semi-auto gas fed or, you know, gas operated guns than have probably ever. But the, the thing with 12 gauge ammunition is not all 12 gauge ammunition is made and produced and designed, uh, to be running gas guns and auto guns and semi-auto guns. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to try stuff out. That's what you got to do. You're going to have to try things out. Uh, and that's, you know, that's part of the fun of being an owner. But I want to caution you because I know a lot of you guys, maybe your friends, you know, that you went to your favorite whatever store and you're like, dude, this bullpup shotgun, this, this semi-auto bullpup, it's, it's so cool and it's pistol grab and all that magazine fed. And uh, I bought it and then I went over to the rack and I'm like, what's the cheapest 12-gauge ammo I can get? The guy's like, oh, this this skeet load right here is the, this the cheapest stuff we've got. And they're like, I'll take it. And he goes out and he's like, this thing won't run. It's a piece of crap. Like, no, Sparky, <laughs> it's not the gun. Calm down. That's like going out and buying Remington Thunderbolt 22 ammo, the dirtiest, cheapest 22 ammo on planet Earth, and then trying to shoot it through a semi-auto gun. And like, this it won't run. This is this gun is a piece of crap. No, you're a piece of crap. Because you didn't buy good ammo. Because you're a cheap SOB and you bought a gun and then you bought the cheapest ammunition you could possibly find. Don't do that. Uh, and the one other thing that I need to uh, caution you on or let you be aware of or remind you of is that some of these guns, these gas operated guns, will have an adjustable gas system. And depending on the setting, your, your ammo is going to run better or worse depending on the setting. So, and I explained that in the video. In the video, uh, it was real simple. The, the gas setting on the, uh, the uh, VP12 is zero through three. Zero being, meaning the least or none, and then one, two, and three. Three meaning the most gas gets back into the action. So when I was using the super, the, the lightweight stuff, the low brass, I had the gas set on three. And when I was using the high brass double lot buck and slugs, I set it to one. 
and it was good to go. So these are just, you know, I thought I would talk about it. This is something you guys need to understand and realize because right now they are dumping, pouring semi-auto and they're all like 99.9% of them are made in Turkey. Uh, they're, they're pouring these things onto the market and they're semi-auto and you need to understand these things. Cause a lot of people have never had a semi-auto 12 gauge, you know, they just assume like, well, I'll put this, you know, whatever this foreign import trap load in there and, and it doesn't work. This gun's a piece of crap. It's not the gun. Calm down. Try some different ammo. Before you say that a gun is a piece of crap, you might want to try more than one type of ammunition with it because it's way easier to change the ammunition than it is to change the gun, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. That's crazy talk. And also, the last thing we're going to talk about today during the Brownells bullet points is if you do buy a 12-gauge semi-auto gun, figure out or discover, read the manual, and find out whether or not it has an adjustable gas system. Because if you're having problems with cycling, you might need to adjust the gas setting. <gasps> yep. Yep, I just did that. That's what I just did. All right. But if you've got a lot of money in your pocket, screw it. Just go to Benelli and buy a Super Black Eagle 3. And, and if you've got eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars $1,900 or whatever, just buy one of those guns and call it good. <laughs> oh, you know what's sad, Zach? Is I used to be tight yeah. with, the, with the folks at Benelli. Yeah. When I was writing for the magazines and stuff. Mm. How times change. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's. I mean, I, they're still friends. I mean, I'm still friends with them. I you just, aren't. You aren't like super duper tight anymore. Yeah, they they should be sponsoring this show. So they should be doing. But, they really should be. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Move on from the Brownells bullet points and uh, talking about the 12 gauge ammo and the gas guns and stuff. And uh, now it's time for me to be quiet and Zach to talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. The store's open right now, Zach? The store is open right now as we speak. If oh, okay. Yeah. If you're listening live, today's the last day of our Memorial Day sale. If you're not listening live, I hope you got in on it. There you go. There you go. And if you didn't, you can still get in on the Brownells one. <laughs> there you go. See? Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's It's like when friends of mine ask me, and they're like, what time does your radio show come on? All the time. Yeah. Uh, and I look at my watch and I say, oh, it's on right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's on right now. You better hurry up. You're going to miss it. But you have to wait till next week. But that's not how this works. It's not how any of that works. All right, let's move on to the student of the gun homeroom. Brought to you by our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters, where our theme is being dangerous on demand. Yes, indeed. That is Dangerous by Madison Rising because, well, the whole theme of the Student of the Gun homeroom is being dangerous on demand. How can you be dangerous on demand? Should you be dangerous on demand? Uh, the answer is yes, you freaking should because uh, nobody's coming. And now, I know that our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters were in Houston this weekend. I know that because I saw pictures of them setting up the booth. Up the booth. They were setting up the booth. And I saw pictures of my boy Trent. I saw him pimping the leather, pimping the gun leather. That's right. So I hope that you guys went by there and uh, said thank you to everyone at uh, Crossbreed for being one of the one of the the show, one of the sponsors that has been with us through thick and thin from the very beginning. Uh, matter of fact, uh, they were here at the beginning of the TV show all the way back in 2010, 2011. And then when we launched student of the gun radio, I called and I said, Hey, we're going to do this thing. We're going to call it student of the gun radio and I could use a sponsor. And they said, we're in. And I said, cool. 
So those guys, uh, we owe them a debt of gratitude for staying with us. So being dangerous on demand. Oh, and Zach, what's the promotional code that people can use when they go to crossbreedholsters.com? It's very, very simple. You just go to crossbreedholsters.com and use the promo code SOTG. Very easy to memorize. That's right. SOTG. When you check out, that means you're going to save yourself some money, get a fantastic holster belt, you know, carry rig, pouch, chest rig, whatever you want. All right. Uh, we got a story here. That's when I say, hey, mom, nice shot. A nice shot, mom. Yeah, we can't use that music because we don't have a license to use it. But uh, we've got a story here. The fact that this story is not the top number one story in the United States of America, the fact that NBC, NBC, CNN have not reached out to the people in West Virginia and brought them on to talk to them about this incident is proof positive that the media state narrative that the operation the, the operating orders for the state media and let's face it at cnn msnbc they're all state-run media their operating orders are fear and control not hope not good news not independence not strength fear and control zach I want you to play the audio so this is a story out of west virginia this happened like a day after or two days after the murders in texas so compare this story that the media is hiding to the story out of texas so the entire memorial day weekend there you know the the media was like oh dead soldiers yeah whatever We'll we'll put up a little picture of a flag and we'll put a picture of a waving flag up for five seconds. OK, we honored Memorial Day. Now, let's go talk about the dead kids. Let's talk about gun control. Let's talk about. Uh, did they did they put this story up? Did they tell you this? Was this story run on? We had a, a couple fans who live in West Virginia that said even in West Virginia, the media barely covered this. They covered it one time. They're like, okay, we said it. We're done. Moving on. Unlike the Texas story where it's been nonstop for a week. But isn't this story here? The, actually, isn't this more important? Well, it doesn't fit the narrative, so we're not going to talk about it. All right, Zach, you got the video queued up? Yes, indeed, I do. All right, go ahead and play it, please. She did the right thing. I don't know if any other person would have done that. A woman in Charleston is being credited for averting a mass shooting. Charleston police say it all started when this man, 37-year-old Dennis Butler, was speeding up and down the parking lot. That's when he was approached by people attending a graduation party and a birthday party, asking him to slow down as children were playing. They said he seemed agitated and left, but shortly after, he returned to the complex, armed with an AR-15 style rifle, and started shooting at the crowd. Police say a woman then pulled out her pistol, shot him, and killed him. I will say on the Charleston, West Virginia case, Charleston Police Department case, this lady was carrying a lawful firearm, okay, a law-abiding citizen who stopped the threat of probably 20 to 30 people getting killed. She engaged the threat and stopped it. She didn't run from the threat. She engaged it, <gasps> preventing a mass casualty here in Charleston. Police say oh. Butler has an extensive criminal history. Back in 2016, he was accused of shooting and pistol whipping a 19-year-old woman, but those charges were dismissed because no witnesses testified at the pretrial hearing. Court records show Butler had been convicted of two felonies in the past, meaning he should have never had a gun to begin with, not in 2016 and not on Wednesday night at the Vista View Apartments. She's just a member of the community who was carrying her firearm lawfully, and instead of running from the threat, she engaged with a threat and saved several lives last night. Quick actions that avoided a massive tragedy as we continue dealing with the aftermath of a mass shooting that left 19 children and two adults dead in Uvalde, Texas. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead. So many lessons here. Holy crap balls. How many lessons do we need in one story? So a private citizen, a woman, I'm guessing it was probably, you know, I don't know. It didn't. And the thing is, 
CNN hasn't reached out to this woman that I know of to bring her on and say, you're a hero. Tell us your story. Nope. Uh, Has anyone outside of Little Charleston read this story, heard this story? Was this the top story on your news feed? No, it wasn't. Why? Because it doesn't fit the, the narrative of fear and control. You see, because this story doesn't make you afraid. This story can't be used to control you. The other story can shame you, make you afraid, cause you to be controlled, but this one doesn't. So we're not going to talk about it. We're going to ignore it. So why is it okay for a mom, hey mom, nice shot, in West Virginia to defend children from a maniac with a gun, but it's not okay for a teacher in Uvalde, Texas to do the same thing? Why can an an armed citizen, hey, Joe, hey, Sniffy Joe, you freaking dementia-riddled meat puppet, are you you paying attention? Is Joe going to get on television and praise this mom and say what a good job she did and how fantastic this was and how she saved lives? She used her personally owned pistol to save lives? Is Joe going to do that? No. That doesn't fit the narrative. We don't want to talk about that. We want people to be afraid. We want gun owners to be ashamed. We want to shame and silence gun owners so that we can control them. And what about the laws? See, the answer that we're getting from the left and the spineless rhino freaking linguini spine scumbags in the Republican Party is... Well, maybe, maybe we need to come together and have some bipartisan, some reasonable restrictions. Hey, butt face. The guy in West Virginia here, and I'm, thank you. Thank you. And this, this is a shame, Zach. Where do we have to go to get like actual real truth? The local news. Yeah. So they pointed out, they're like, uh, hey, hey, uh, Johnny Crapbag, who's now a corpse, he's a convicted felon. He was a convicted felon before he pistol whipped a girl. He was a convicted felon before he showed up in the parking lot with a rifle. It was against the law for him not only to pistol whip somebody, um, it was against the law to attempted murder people in a, an apartment complex, but it was also against the law for him to have a gun. So how do you get one? Oh, you mean that bad people who do bad things? You mean convicted felons who don't go to prison, don't stay in prison? You see, that's, that's the state of our jurisprudence today is we have felons, we arrest them, sometimes we convict them, sometimes we don't, and we put them away for a little bit. They go to prison, learn how to become better criminals. Then they get out and they're right back out on the street abusing you. You see, the members of the state aren't afraid because the members of the state, the ruling class elite, they have bodyguards. They use your tax money to pay for armed security. So they're good. You see, the up on the on the steps of the Capitol, they take your money and they pay for armed armed protection and if you trespass in their house they'll kill you no they won't yeah they will because we saw it happen uh ashley babbitt was trespassing and she was murdered by a minion of the state straight up murdered and got away with it he he got away with it and the uh, the scumbag elitists up on capitol hill are like well she shouldn't have been there and that goes to show you peasants if you show up if you trespass in our house you're like well but we paid for that that building was bought and paid for with u.s taxpayer dollars yeah but it's a government building it's gonna be so hard zach you have your hand over the deedle button metaphorically yes you (laughs) 
So what I want, my question to you is, and, and good job, woman, whoever you are out there, you know who you are. Why is this story not the number one story in America? Answer that for yourself. So we've got to deal, and uh, I'm going to be quiet, and we're going to move on to this next story. This next story, uh, Zach, I want you to play the, the audio from this. And I want you to uh, start it out, play like the first minute or so, maybe two. And then we're going to go forward to four minutes and 15 seconds. Can you do that? The first two minutes and then forward to a minute and 15 seconds. So the, the, the liberal leftist scumbag piece of human filth, Wolf Blitzer, and let's face it, he is. He's a piece of crap. He brings on this cowboy hat wearing lieutenant from down in Uvalde. And he, he has him explain to the people, to the idiots of America, why it's okay that cops, why it's okay and acceptable that police officers in Texas, rather than rushing in en masse to stop this monster, this psychotic lunatic Democrat from murdering children, he's going to explain why it was okay for them to be, well, well, they were outside. Some of them were inside. Some of them were hiding. Um, but that's okay. You, you stupid peasants. We want to let you know that that was okay. So I'm going to sip some water. And I'm going to let you listen to this this clip with Blitzer and this, this just feckless coward. I'm t- And you're like, who are you to judge? Let me tell you who I am to judge. I've been wearing a uniform my whole life. I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, all right? And uh, I know of which I speak. And this guy is a cowardly piece of crap. And he needs to resign. That's the, that's the nicest thing that I will say on public radio, is that he should resign. Here's his. A- all right, I'll go ahead. And do- Was that an autoplay ad? Uh, yeah, it, I hit play and then boom, add. All right, here we go. And <laughs> on these, and three, two, one. Now, Lieutenant Chris Oliveira, as uh, Lieutenant, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as you well know, officers were on the scene with, within minutes of this gunman entering that elementary school, but it was another hour or so before the gunman was neutralized. Can you walk us through what exactly law enforcement was doing? for what 60 minutes or so while the shooter remained in that classroom killing those kids and teachers good evening Wolf. so of course that's something we want to clarify um, there's a lot of conflicting statements and reports that are that are being shared also on social media and that's why we want to provide factual information by corroborating that information through physical evidence we are still this is still early stages of the investigation that's one thing that we need to understand uh, we're trying to have a concrete timeline in place. Of course, you heard earlier today when we held our press conference, uh, we were able to provide some of that information. But one thing I do want to stress, though, is that officers were in that building within minutes. They maintained uh, their presence inside that school. Uh, we had multiple officers that responded on the scene within minutes. Two of those officers were shot. They took cover because you have to understand this is an active situation. You have an active shooter that is shooting towards law enforcement as well as the children, the students, uh, the teachers that are inside that school, but those officers maintained cover. They did not flee from that school. They were inside that school while they were being shot at. So that's one thing I need to stress and clarify uh, to the viewers and to everyone else out there that those officers were on scene. Also, in, in addition to that, other officers arrived and they were able to evacuate other children as well. And, and teachers, we have to understand too that there was multiple, numerous, uh, it was a full school. I mean, it, they were trying to evacuate as many people as possible. Go ahead and pause it right there. Let me let me go ahead and say something to this guy. This guy, oh, you you you, 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 you understand? They, they, they were there. Uh, they entered the school. Okay, it's a big building, and, and there two officers got shot. Did they die? Did did you die? Did did they get hit by frag? Okay, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we we talked about the FBI Miami shootout, right? Uh, 
and the hero, the the A number one hero of the FBI Miami shootout uh, was Ed Morales. And Ed Morales, in the beginning of the fight, was shot with an eight, with a five five six a two two three right. He was shot with a two two three. Now it was an AR. It was a mini fourteen back then. Uh, but same bullet, right? Same cartridge. I guarantee you that the scumbag who who did this, you know, had, was probably using just two two three. But whatever. So Ed Morales was shot in the left forearm. It broke both bones in his left forearm. Fortunately. Because if his forearm wouldn't have been where it was, the bullet would have gone into his heart and he'd be gone. Uh, he was shot in the left forearm, broke both bones in his left forearm, and he had a, a, a grazing bullet wound to the head. All right. Pretty serious injury. So Ed had, so that was within the first one minute of the, he fired his shotgun one handed until it was empty. Then he stood up with a six-shot revolver, not a semi-automatic Glock or SIG or whatever these guys are carrying down in Texas. Six-shot revolver, and he walked into the bad guys. Walked directly towards him. With, he left cover because they were trying to get away, and he knew that if they got away, they were going to hurt more people. So he stood up, left cover, and walked directly towards them and shot them in the freaking heads until they couldn't move anymore. And this this piece of human filth, sorry, bro, not sorry. Hey, did you hear Paul Markle called you a piece of human filth? Oh, I did. He's going to go on TV and say, there were officers in the building. They didn't leave the building. They took cover for 40 minutes. They took cover for 40 minutes. No, you take cover, formulate a plan and execute. That's what you do. You take cover, formulate a plan and execute. Move from cover to cover to cover until you're at the objective. You know, they took cover. Oh, they were shot at. Did they die? Oh, I bet they feel good knowing that they took cover for 40 minutes while kids were being slaughtered. And this, this scumbag was reloading. How many times did this guy have a chance to reload? How many kids were wounded, mortally wounded, and just laid there and bled to death because no one came? Oh, yeah, they were there. And they helped get other people out. You don't understand. They were there and they helped other. Oh, did they help? What? You're telling me that adults, that adult teachers and principals and stuff needed the police officers help to get out of the building? D does this school never have fire drills? Zach, when you went to school, did you have fire drill? Yes, we did. You did? How'd you get out of the building? I uh, walked an orderly line, orderly line to the exit. Well, was there a police officer in there to help you get out of the building? No. What? According to Lieutenant Fallis Face, um, I'm trying to keep it PG here, folks. Uh, uh, according to uh, Lieutenant, um, what's what's Wiener? What's Spanish for Wiener? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. There's, there's got to be a slang. There's got to be a slang. I, I know what Cabeza is. So, um, according to Lieutenant uh, Fallis Cabeza here. Police, they, they went in and they helped evacuate staff and students. So the staff members and the students needed a police escort to walk out of the building. They couldn't have got out of the building. They don't know how. They wouldn't know how. Yeah, you know, when, when the officers got there, the teachers and students were just running around in circles. They're like, how do we get out of this building? I only, oh, if only one of you Valdi's finest was here to show us where the exit was. And the lieutenant's like, they went in and helped people get out of the building. Do you not hear yourself talk? And the officers that got shot at, they took cover and stayed there. Oh, let's, let's pin freaking medals on their chests. So they took cover for 40 minutes while this monster, this Democrat, this, oh, Zach, have you seen the pictures of the killer? 
standing in front of the transgender flag. I assume is yeah, what you're getting the, at. The, the, yeah, the 18 year old psychotic lunatic that the debt left loves. Remember, two weeks ago, that person would have been brave and fearless and courageous. Oh, this this 18 year old lunatic was born with a penis, but he thinks he's a girl. Oh, that's so brave. That's so fearless. It's so courageous. No, it's not. It's a mental illness. And the left and the Democrats encourage that mental illness. And they want to teach your kids all about it. And they're throwing hissy fits in Florida because the governor said, no, uh, you can't indoctrinate our children into this psychotic freaking uh, death cult that you're in. Notice that. Uh, remember when that little white scumbag went into the church in South Carolina and murdered people? Every news report led with his face because he was a little white turd. Every news report led with his face. I'm going to ask you guys, you're in my audience, you're smart people. You've seen this crap. It's flooded your your phones and your news feeds. Does every news report lead with a photo of the killer? This one you say, no, Paul, actually, none of them do. They show us pictures of the school and the do not cross tape and and officers standing outside in clusters and maybe a rifle or or, you know, but they never show. They did once. They're like, "Uh, we did it one time. That's it. But it gets it gets better. Go to 415 in the video. Because I want you guys to hear, because you're like, I don't believe a cop would say this. I don't believe a police officer in America would say these words on national television because they would know better. Nope, not today. Not today. Where this suspect was at, um, they could have been shot. They could have been killed. And at that point, that gunman would have the opportunity to kill other people inside that school. So they were able to contain that gunman. Stop. They could have been shot. And then what would happen? Then they um, would have killed other people. Exactly what like did they happen. they already did. Yeah. They could have been shot. He doesn't deserve that cowboy hat. Yeah. It, what what, what uh, the, the phrase is, all hat, no cattle. In Texas, when people are posers, take, your, take that hat off. You don't, you, Zach's absolutely right. You don't deserve it. You're a poser. You're a piece of crap. Now, some people online, some of our friends, some of you guys have offered suggestions as to what this cop and the others should do. And I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to say it. This is public radio. Uh, So that's not bad enough. But when you have to go to the dailymail.co.uk and good on them, good on the Brits. See, the Brits are over there and they're like watching us Americans like a game show. You know, they watch America like it's a game show or a reality television show. So the Brits broke this story first. And after the Brits broke the story, well, then then the uh, the American news media is like, oh, crap. If if we don't. If we don't break this story, if we don't talk about this, then it's going to seem like, well, like we're not really journalists, but instead propagandists. So they said, okay, all right, we'll we'll talk about this. Now, they begrudgingly did, but you need to understand that the uh, uh, the British media when did they break this story? I think it was the next day. I think it was the day after. It was 26 May, uh, 2022. So, Zach, you want to help me out here? Uh, yeah, sure thing. One moment while I open it up. All right. The title is, Texas officials launch investigation into Uvalde police response to school shooting. And then there's a paragraph underneath that but it's just the yeah school. but 
Go ahead. Texas officials have launched an investigation. You don't have to reread. Where, where are you at? Okay, I'm on the top paragraph. Oh, okay. Which All is right. just apparently blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. At Robb Elementary School on Tuesday after conflicting statements whether cops fired at the gunman as he made his way inside. Salvador Ramos, 18, Salva- arrived at, at the school. Salvador Ramos. What I say? The, the transgender uh, Democrat lunatic. At Uvalde. It, it, it wasn't a red hat wearing Trump supporter. At 1130 a.m. crashing his car into a ditch. A school resource officer was at the scene, but he failed to stop him from making his way inside. Okay, stop right there. Why? How? How and why? Okay, remember what uh, the cop, the lieutenant says? He goes, he goes. Well, you know, he 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 shot at the police officers and not and then not at the kids. It's like that's your job. Your job is to press the fight so that innocent people are no longer the targets, so that you become the target, officer crap bag. That's your job in an active shooter is to stop them from murdering the innocent and force them to turn their attention to you. That's why you're there. So where did this school resource officer go? Did he leave and go get coffee? Was this, is he dead? Is the SRO dead? And you're, you say, no, he's not because he's not listed among the dead. Then where was he? SRO was on the scene, but failed to stop him from making his way inside. Okay, so he ran towards him and shot at him until he was out of ammunition. No. Where was he? Was he like the guy in Florida who was like, oh, I'm going to go get help. I'll be back. Try to bleed slowly. I'll see you guys later. All right, go on. I'm going to lose my voice. Two other cops also rushed to the school at the time. Ramos had just shot his grandmother in the face at their home less than five miles away. She survived and called the police. It was first reported that those cops exchanged gunfire with Ramos, but police now say they cannot confirm that. Mm-hmm. Ramos went to barricade himself in the classroom, killing 19 kids and two teachers before a SWAT team breached the door and shot him around an hour later. An hour later. Sources say police were so- struggling to get into the classroom and needed a key to open the door. So, There's no windows? Eventually, a Border Patrol agent was able to get inside, and the shooting was declared at uh, 1.06 p.m. But questions remain. Why it took police so long to get into the classroom where kids were trapped with the gunman? was declared over at 1.06 p.m. You said it was declared at 1.06. It was declared over. But, oh, uh, yeah. We declared over at 1.06 p.m. All right. Go to frustrated parents. Frustrated parents were standing outside the school, begging cops to go inside when the shooting was unfolding. Javier Cares, uh, Cazares. Not, Cazares, whose nine-year-old daughter was murdered, says cops were, quote, just standing there and waiting for protective shields to arrive at the scene before they went in. They said they rushed in and all that. We didn't see that, he told the New York Times, adding that many were, quote, just standing there. Quote, plenty of men out there armed to the teeth that could have gone in faster. This could have been over in a couple of minutes. He added that police were faster to escort Beto O'Rourke out of a press conference yesterday when he started heckling the governor than they were to get into the school. Angel Garza, whose daughter was killed, was handcuffed after trying to run into the school when he heard that a girl called Emery had been shot. He later found out he was, she was among the dead who, who died while giving medical aid to other children who escaped. Uh, Derek Stilett. So Angel Garza, real quick, do you recognize? Yeah, that that's name? a name. Yeah, I think it's from Hollywood. But anyway, no, he's a wrestler. Oh, Angel Garza's wrestler. That's right. Okay, go on. Don't get don't sidetrack. Sorry, I'm just Derek curious if that's the same one. Derek Sotelo, 26, who works at an entire shop nearby, said parents were begging to be let into the school. "Quote: They were angry, especially the dads. We were wondering what the heck is going on. Are they going in? The dads were saying, give me the vest. I'll go in there.'" So uh, if you scroll down pictures and stuff, all right, this is where Here if you as an American are not insanely angry right now, I don't even know what to say to you. There's video. So rat. Wow. This is the insane thing. Middle of this story. While there's a lunatic, a psychotic Democrat inside of a school, they don't have he's not being controlled. He's murdering at will. There are cops standing out in the parking lot, 
arresting and wrestling with parents. Their parents being handcuffed, pepper sprayed, and tasered. These cops are so there. I was a cop, and I, I'm at the point in my life where I'm about ashamed. In this current climate, I'm ashamed to let people know that I was a police officer. What in the hell are you people doing? Are you playing dress up? So there, there, there should not be one cop standing in, in, the, in the parking lot. Every single one of them should have been in that building. Well, we didn't know where the, uh, according to Lieutenant uh, Penis Face, uh, they didn't know where the shooter was and, and they couldn't just run in because they could get shot. That's their job. When innocent children are being murdered, it's your job to run into the building and risk being shot. So instead, I don't know how any of these people can can get up every day and look in a mirror. I can't even fathom the level of cowardice. You're going to you're a big bad super hard ass when when you're tackling parents. You're pepper spraying parents and tasering them while there's a lunatic killing children in a building and you know it. Well, we had to wait for the SWAT team. What? It's been how many? All right. 1999 to now. That's how long we've had to prepare. That's how long police agencies have had to prepare for this. Okay. When, when did when did the Parkland thing go down? When the FBI knew about the kid and they're like, we can't be bothered with that? So real, real quick, I, I, I continued reading the, reading the story. Unable to drive, he crashed into a ditch and ran to school on foot where he was met by an armed security guard. Yet he was still able to enter the school and kill 21 people. Was that what? one security guard one of the dead people? No. They were both he teachers, He's right? not dead. So he was, he was allegedly met by an armed security guard, and yet he still got inside, and that security guard is not dead. So in 2018, that little piece of crap went into the Marjorie Parkman Stone Douglas, right? So, and we had the same thing down there. The, uh, the, the, the brave, super... The cop chick who was the the on scene commander ordered officers to stay out and not go in until they just let the kids die. Paramedics couldn't go in. Just let them die. So this, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to ask yourself as a citizen of the United States of America. Are these police officers on the Uvalde Police Department and everyone, are they cowards or are they complicit or both? Because their actions and their behavior guaranteed a higher death count. The state had an opportunity. Oh, and then stories later. uh, Yeah, we find out that police were well aware of this uh salvador whatever his name is the, this this trans this transgender psychotic democrat who murdered these kids they were well, they were well aware of him he would had previous encounters with the police he had driven around shooting people with a bb gun kind of like they the cops knew all about that little scumbag in florida cops knew all about this psycho they knew about him. Every opportunity that the state had to do something about this guy, they failed. They failed. He was seen by an armed security officer. All right. What? What? Am I, is this like a? Am I, is this like crazy talk here? This is. We're living in crazy land. So he was. So how many cops saw this kid and and didn't stop him? 
And then the ones that ran in, they're like, oh, what should we do? Oh, well, let's not go near the guy with the gun. Let's go help the teachers evacuate the children because they don't know how to get out of the building. These brave officers went into the building and helped the kids get out. That's not your job. You're not a crossing guard. And I can't. And here's the deal, Zach. Why do I have to do journalist jobs for them? No idea. Why do I have to do the job of the people who are paid to be journalists? So not one person says, so you're telling me that the that the teachers and kids couldn't find their way out of the building without an art, without a police escort. So rather than going toward they're like they had to find a key, shoot the lock off. And they had to find it like, well, we can't go in the classroom because we couldn't find a key. It's not a freaking bank vault. It's a freaking it's door. A, it's a classroom door. OK, so um, uh, w- when you're executing a no knock warrant because you think some, the guy inside has two hundred dollars worth of marijuana. So you show up at three a.m. to smash his door down and and flood in. Uh, did, did you use a key then? I saw uh, somebody posted on it. They said, uh, if you're willing to to execute a no knock raid because you think somebody has two hundred dollars worth of marijuana in their house, but you're not willing to go into a school, you're not a police officer. You're the Stasi. You're the Gestapo. See, it's easy to pick on the innocent. It's easy to pick on parents. It's hard. You don't understand when 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 bad guys have guns, it's hard. That's hard. That's tough. It's way easier for me to stand out in the parking lot and and beat up these these mouthy parents who think they're going to go inside than to go in. I, I what what did the lieutenant say? Well, I might get shot. Can can we go ahead and and stop with the sacred cow stuff now? I know people in my audience are like, I back the blue, thin blue line. I have my thin blue line flag. And and you're like, aren't you? You're a police officer. You should be 100%. No, no, because there's no sacred cows. You don't get automatic immunity for your behavior because you put on a uniform. Putting on a uniform doesn't give you carte blanche to do whatever you want. You're responsible for your behavior every single day, every minute of every day. You don't get a pass because you volunteered to put on a uniform for the state. You're like, I volunteered to put on a uniform for a state. Ooh, look at me. So I can be a complete sniveling piece of crap coward. And uh, I can be a thug in uniform. I can beat up parents in a parking lot while their kids are being murdered behind me. 500 yards 200 yards away, 200 yards away. This guy's kids are getting murdered, but I'm not going to let him because we're in charge. We're in charge of this scene. And then the Democrats are going to run out and and dance in the blood of the the innocent and say, see, you don't need guns. Why? Why don't we need guns? Because because if bad people come and bad people do things, then you just call the police. We did. And they made the situation worse. They made the situation worse. They didn't make it better. Think about it. How many armed parents were there that could have been inside that school in two minutes? That woman in West Virginia, she made it better. I guess the woman in West Virginia should have just got on her phone and dialed 911 and waited just to see what happened. Give the guy a chance to murder everybody there. Well, we need laws because 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 we need red flag laws and and not a not a. It's like um, the guy in West Virginia. There was no more red flag. That guy was a convicted felon, prohibited from owning a gun, and yet he still did. So what are your laws going to do? Well, the laws are going to punish the innocent, and then the bad people will just keep on doing 
what they do because we don't punish bad people in America anymore. So in the United States of America uh, today, where we punish the innocent and make excuses for the guilty, what's the point in being, quote, law abiding? Because those who don't abide the law, Democrats make excuses for them. Not their fault. It's not this 18-year-old psychotic lunatic. It's not, not his fault. It's, it's the gun's fault. It's the manufacturer's fault. They should, they should have known better. When they made that gun, they should have known. That's funny. Because if AR-15s are so bad and so evil and they're the focus of evil in the world, then why do I see in this Daily Mail story here? I see pictures of members of the state walking around in the parking lot with black rifles, with AR-15s. I thought that the AR-15 was the focus of evil in the world. So, oh, it's, it's only the focus of evil if the peasants are allowed to have them. You see, we need to let the cops have them so that after a mass murder, then the cops, these, these fat piece of crap, here's, here's a, hey, chubby, you need to put down your rifle and go, go for a walk. You need to hit the gym, chubby. So chubby here is all dressed up in his cool guy gear. He's got his $5,000 nods on him. He's got a, an AR with a suppressor. Got all this stuff. He's holding a smoke grenade in his hand or, or something. Maybe it's a, uh, a gas grenade. Maybe he's going to go gas some, uh, some parents. So Chubby here, he's all, he's all ready for the party. Now, he's not in the school. Not in the school. We got another picture of a bunch of really super cool, brave, courageous members of the state leaning on a fence, holding their black rifles. They got their black rifles because because the state needs to have a monopoly on violence. And they'll decide. This is shameful. It is shameful. I don't know. I don't know how much more to say. Oh, this guy, he's got a badge on his shoulder. He says he's part of the state police. So. So. Here's what Uvalde, Texas taught us. Again, we didn't learn from Parkland, I guess. We didn't learn from Parkland. We didn't learn from Parkland that uh, gun-free zones don't work. We didn't learn from Parkland that uh, that the government, even though they know about this guy, they're like, oh, yeah, that 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 kid, that kid's a psycho. OK, what are we, well, well, you can't just you can't just do something. you got to wait until they murder people. And then blame the gun. That's what you have to do. How does it? It said that he owned two Daniel Defense rifles. Zach, do you know how much a Daniel Defense rifle costs? Like five grand, right? They're they're top shelf. They're like twenty two hundred bucks a piece. Where does an eighteen year old who's lit an eighteen year old lunatic who's living with his grandma come up with five thousand dollars for guns and ammo and accessories? Did you have when you were eighteen, did you have five grand just laying around to go buy guns? No. Cheapest one I'm seeing is eighteen hundred bucks on their website. Okay, so about two grand with tax and so forth. So yeah, with tax. So yeah, definitely. With tax. If you had five, that's five. Uh, two, that's five grand at least. Yeah. Where does an eighteen-year-old get five grand in cash to to buy guns? I don't have five grand in cash. Yeah. I have a full. Most I people are listening like I, I. I I work full time. I can't afford a, a Daniel Defense rifle. What the heck? This whole thing stinks. This whole thing stinks to high heaven. And the fact that the Democrats in the scumbag, mealy mouth freaking rhinos are like, oh, this just proves we need more common sense gun laws. No, it doesn't. It does not. This doesn't prove we need more common sense gun laws when we rely on the state to save us and they fail at every turn. 
every opportunity that the state had to save those children, they failed. And so what's the answer? Punish the innocent and give more power to the state. But the state failed. Yeah, but they only failed because we didn't give them enough power. What? They only failed because innocent people, the ones who don't commit crimes, are still have freedoms. We can't allow that. I don't know about you, but I'm about sick of this crap. You should be sick of it, too. So tomorrow on Thursday, that's the private show. And I can swear. I can say what I don't have to hold back. I kind of sometimes am jealous of some of these guys uh, like Rogan and, and people like, I'm not, I'm not a, I don't love Joe Rogan, but he's, he's a good example. Everybody knows who he is. Um, who have, they have podcasts that are just adult format podcasts and they're like, I'm, I'm going to swear and if you don't like it. Don't listen. You know, that's the thing, Zach, is, is we, we're trying to keep it family friendly and we've always done that. And we're like, people, people have told us, like, well, if you want a broader audience, you have to keep it family friendly. Who has the number one top listen to podcast in America? Rogan. And he swears every single time. Well, yeah. So that so that actually kind of is not really true. <laughs> most of the most successful ones are a bunch of potty mouths. <laughs> mm. that's just kind of how it works out yeah all right tomorrow uh you let me see uh thursday's episode will you be ruled by liars will you allow yourself to be ruled by liars uh that's a question that's an important question and uh something that we're going to talk about tomorrow we're gonna have a leadership lesson and we're also gonna have fighting fitness tomorrow too so uh, if you guys enjoyed today's show, you definitely want to be here tomorrow. Uh, if you enjoyed today's show, you should sign up for the grad program. Tell them how they can do that, Zach. It's real simple. You go to getsotg.com right now. Sign up for the grad program. You'll get a, a $1 trial if you want to start. We're still doing that, right? Uh, Let's go with yes. What? You get a $1 trial to start start the program. You get access to a, like, a closed group of LMIs, an extra two episodes of SOTG radio per week and all kinds of other great stuff. So we yeah. would highly suggest it. It'll, it's a good time. Once again, that's get SOTG.com. Sign up today. That's right. That's right. All right. Until the next time we're together, ladies and gentlemen, remember it, it's, it's up to you. You have to be dangerous on demand. No one is coming. And when they do come, they're going to stand in the parking lot and argue while you are inside the church the school, the shopping mall, wherever, uh, you'll be on the inside getting murdered and the guys with badges and guns will be in the parking lot arguing about what they should do next. But don't worry, they'll come in eventually. They'll show up an hour later and put you in a body bag and carry you out. And then they'll use your corpse to disarm the American citizenry. Cool, cool. Or you could be dangerous on demand and live your life like a free man, a free woman, a citizen, uh, or, or not. It's up to you. It's up to you. Until the next time we're together, remember, you're a beginner once. But you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.